the key um, you know, number that concerns us is the one on top, which is on, on your right at the top, which is the, our market share in South Africa in the rest of the continent. Ten years ago, South Africa used to account for about 76% of the continent's production in Africa. That number has since dropped to 54% and going down. And one of the reasons why that is the case is because we are beginning to see a lot of countries, particularly in the north, Morocco, Egypt, Ghana, Nigeria, beginning to take a very, very aggressive approach in terms of participating in the automotive industry. Those guys are eating our lunch and their proximity to Europe is one of our biggest challenge because it takes Morocco four hours in order for them to be able to move a ship between Morocco and Spain while it takes us in South Africa on a lucky day, eight days, to move a ship from Europe into Durban. And if Durban is obviously fully functional and transnet um, you know, is not able to have challenges that it, it has in terms of logistics, uh, it sometimes even takes longer because we have instances where ships come into South Africa but they're not able to dock uh, into the Durban port uh, because of some of the logistical challenges that we have. So that number is absolutely one that we are watching <coughs> with hawk eyes in order for us to really be able to make sure that we are able to protect uh, our position as a country and make sure that we don't have uh, the deadline that we've seen in the last 10 years. Morocco in particular is moving at an aircraft speed. I'm sure many of you are aware that Morocco has already established a giga factory in terms of battery manufacturing uh, for EVs, for NEVs, and they're moving at an aircraft speed. We are actually going to Morocco uh, later on uh, this year, around September, and we know that they're also coming to South Africa. We already have 16 engineers who have left South Africa to go to Morocco. Uh, so they're even using our own skills to be able to beat us at our own game. So I think in South Africa, we need to be able to think differently in terms of really trying to protect uh, our industry in South Africa. What can we do um, you know, to be able to support uh, and what can the uh, cities and the province do uh, to support investments and the growth of the, uh, of the automotive industry. I'm sure this slide is not uh, unique and uh, different, and, and I'm glad that, Blake, when you started, you said to the city manager that uh, uh, you hope that there's not going to be uh, another vote of confidence. So if you look at what is happening in our cities and also in our provinces, it is a very big concern. So we've given, for an example, a simple illustration uh, at Nelson Mandela Bay, and we chose Nelson Mandela Bay because uh, it is actually the biggest municipality where vehicles are produced from. And you can clearly see that since 2009, they've had 41 city, acting city managers uh, in that particular city. Uh, they've had uh, nine mayors uh, since 2018. Uh, even the current mayor uh, is also uh, probably sitting in a position where he might be voted out uh, sooner rather than later, so which is obviously a very big challenge uh, for all of us. The challenges are huge. So for us, we are convinced that as the automotive industry, we have for the longest time relied on a very awkward policy development ecosystem. Um, because I think if you look at how the South African policy development is structured currently, we have really built very strong walls in relation to who should be doing what and who should, who should not be doing what. And I'll give you a very practical example. If you take for an example the issue around policy uncertainty that we're currently uh, having as a sector, particularly in relation to the announcements uh, by government on new energy vehicles in particular. 
the two biggest mandate of any government is policy development and provision of service to its population. Whether that government is sitting at provincial, municipal, or national level, it is government's work or job to, to develop policy. The structural arrangements in the country today, unfortunately, are not in favor of the automotive industry. What do I mean by that? If you look at how government is structured today at national level, the automotive industry reports into the DTIC, which is obviously our um, line department. The capacity that the DTIC has, and we, we absolutely sympathize with our colleagues at the DTIC because we simply do not have adequate capacity within that department to support the automotive industry. If you look at the structure of the economy in South Africa, some of the biggest contributors, if you look at sectors that are contributing more than 5% to the South African economy, you look at mining, you look at agriculture, you look at tourism, I can go on and on and on. All those sectors have departments that service and support those sectors. The automotive industry is supported through the TTIC, which has a multiplicity of other um, responsibilities over and above just looking after the automotive industry. And within the DTIC, we have what we call the Autodesk. If you look at the Department of Mineral and Energy, which Minister Gwedeman Tache manages, you've got a whole department, a minister, two deputy ministers, a DG, and 3,000 officials who are supporting the mining industry. You go to agriculture, the same thing is the case. Agriculture is even worse. You go to provinces, there's a Department of Agriculture in provinces um, with government officials supporting the agriculture uh, sector in the country. In auto, you only have six officials within the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition who are expected to support policy formulation for this industry. This question that I was asked to address, I think it is about time that as a country, we look at institutions that we have already within government, in our local government, in our provincial government, and then of course in the national government, to say how do we support the industry going forward. We have the AIDC here in Gauteng under the leadership of Andile, and we also have similarly the AIDC in the Eastern Cape uh, under the leadership of Tawo uh, And I see we've got the board member here, Kolani, who's here with us. There is no reason, none whatsoever, to create policy capability within our own AIDCs in our provinces so that we can be able to agitate and support the work that the DTIC is currently having. We have reduced our AIDCs and provincial structures that we have into implementing agents uh, who are not given a very strong mandate to really focus on policy. And I think the time has now come for us to really recalibrate how we use our own structures in our province and also in the municipalities so that we can be able to support, so that the DTIC, when they are thinking about introducing a white paper on new energy vehicle, that white paper is informed by what the province wants to see in that white paper. Instead of having a policy drafted and thrown down to uh, you know, the province and then to the municipality, we need to flip that coin around so that we can be able to really support uh, the work that we do.